recording now for the the actual thing, but we'll kick it sure. off. Let's let's bring it back like to what we're supposed to be talking about, which is two DX. Because <laughs> you know this is going to blow your mind, but you know this is the first time we've actually sat down and spoken, spoken. Yeah, like, I, I was going to say that like we've known each other for like what years? I don't know when's the first time I actually spoke to you. Three or four like, years. I reckon. Uh, it's like around the time when Sean was playing. Yeah. I think, yeah, maybe so five there, years there ago. There was, like, you were never part of that, like, Asian chat, right? Because we had, like, Abby, Wilson, someone else. I think I was, though. I was. Yeah, like, so it was, was this it was this group on Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah. So there was that yeah, group yeah. that I'd never spoken because I was like, I don't know enough Chinese to be talking in this group. And I'm not good <laughs> enough of a player to talk in this group. <laughs> so I never, like, really got engaged with that. But, yeah, I was pretty sure you were in there. Yeah, yeah, I was in there. But, um, yeah, but I think the first time was really just because of Taisuke, you know. Yeah. Taisuke just been like, yeah, everyone talk about 2DX. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like back when he was like crazy about Ooh. 2DX. Yeah, yeah like the whole BBI thing. <laughs> now he's uh, into the into the waifus a bit too hard now. Sending me his, uh, his clamp battles from Pinecone. God, it frustrates me so much when he does that. He keeps pinging me. I get a ping from him every day. Being like, hey, check out my clan battle score. I'm like, Tysuke, I don't... Hey, do a clan battle, <laughs> <laughs> Uh All right, so let's, let's go back like way, way to the start then. Because I remember the first time hearing about you was actually during... I think it was Sparta. And once again, because oh, of Sean. Really? Yeah. Because Sean was like, oh, there's this guy named Wisely. He's really good. You know, he's 2P. And, you know, I, I want to be better than him. And then that changed to, man, fuck that guy. He's such an asshole because he's just so good. You know how short is. But, uh... <laughs> but, yeah, when did you actually start? Ah, oh, uh... Like, start rhythm games in general? Or yeah, yeah, let's, we'll start, like, all the way back with rhythm games, sure. Like, when did that start? Oh, that brings me back. Um, so the first time I, like, played rhythm games was maybe when I was f five, I think. Wow, five. Yeah, so uh, story goes is that, like, I think that was around the period where pop music first came out. That was, like, pop music one or two. What, what year um, was this, like, 2004, 2003? No, like, 2000. Wow, oh my god. Yeah, so I, I was five or six at the time, maybe. Yeah, so, like, I just happened to be passing by this small mall at, uh, near my place. So, oh, shit, there's a time zone there we went in. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a pop music there. So, like, I played it together with my mom. Oh, oh that's <laughs> so cute. So, like, that's my first, like, exposure to music games or, like, rhythm games in general. Uh, when I actually started playing, my first real rhythm game was probably O2 Jam. So, oh, yeah. shout out to you, Jordan. <laughs> uh... I started playing in 2005-ish. Yeah, so when, still it, when in... it first came out back, you know, ages ago, when I was still in school. Yeah. yeah, I remember it. Yeah, like, I think O2 Gem, like, the Malaysian servers, uh, they, they first opened up in, like, 2003, 2004. I was still too young back then. I didn't have internet back then. So uh, I started playing a little later, maybe 2005-ish. Yeah. I wasn't really good. I wasn't very good at the game. But, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> hey man, no one was good at it back then. I remember seeing, like, you know, chord streams just going, that's impossible. No one can hit that many notes. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I did clear a bunch of, like, pretty hard songs for the time. Stuff like Earthquake. Oh, damn. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's, isn't that, like, I a 30? 38, I think. Dude, that, that's insane. I'm like, I remember when I started playing, 15s were hard when I started. It's like, bro, you could do a 15? Holy crap. But yeah, dude, that's yeah. insane. Like, doing 36s. Yeah. Is... yeah, like, back then I was like maybe 12 or 13. Mm. Should have stuck with Photo Jam. <laughs> <laughs> could, have, could have gone to, um, you know, the Asian Championship. Seen, seen champion yeah. Jordan Neo in the flesh. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I I remember hearing about O2 Jam, like, through WCG. Mm. Yeah, so, like, there was a period when I was playing StarCraft. So, so StarCraft, they had, like, like every year they have uh, a tournament at WCG, right? Then, oh, nice. Yeah, then, like, uh, I just happened to hear about O2 Jam, like, through that as well. 
uh, there's this like, oh shit, this game looks really hard. There are, there are like blocks <laughs> dropping from the ceiling. Shit, this game is hard. I got to try this. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, that O2 Jam was my real like first rhythm game. Do you think then... that's a common trend with most Asian players? Because I mean, obviously, you know, Beat Mania and stuff is exclusively Japanese. So do you reckon a lot of Asian players first started with O2 Jam? Uh, I can think of a couple of games that most of us start from. So, uh, like this was like pre Bimani in Asia, right? Like yeah, yeah. we we did really get uh outside of Hong Kong, we did really get two DX or we maybe kind of had DDR, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we didn't really have anything else. So this like the pre U beat era. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking like early 2000s, you know. Like yeah, like 2005, 2006. Yeah, man. Same, thing, yeah. same thing with my local arcade. We had, um, we just had DDR Extreme. Uh, wait, no, we actually had a lot at our local because we, the guy who ran it was like very pro-Japanese games. So we actually had DDR, oh. Guitar Freaks, Drum Mania and um, Dance Maniacs, which is like really rare apparently. So, you know, having those is like <laughs> already a music game hub. But yeah, so yeah, we, we were lucky, like actually super duper lucky. Um, but yeah, so did you go to the arcade when you were younger, like regularly or? Mm, I, st I started going like, okay, so uh, story. So I started playing O2 Jam, right? Yeah, and yeah. the server shut down. <laughs> yeah. uh... <laughs> I remember that. Or was that because you had to pay for it? Remember how they started making you have to pay for a subscription? Right, like, they oh, started, um, you started having to pay for stuff like, like to play on random, you had to pay money. Uh, <laughs> so to, good. To play certain songs, like the like the WCG final song, was it end of fight? Yeah. You had to pay for it as well. So like a lot of people started leaving. Then the servers shut down. Mm. Yeah. So that was maybe two thousand seven, two thousand eight ish. Then because of that, like I didn't have anything to play, right? So like I was playing what was the game on the side FFR. <laughs> yeah. Good old I was I was playing. Yeah, I was playing Flash Flash Revolution on the side, but I ne never really got into it. Uh, Did you also pick up what? What's it called? What's the game Tysk? was called Eterna. Did you start playing that around then too? I mean, back then it was called Step Mania. <laughs> yeah, I played it a bit on the side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how he still plays it to this day. But yeah, so did, yeah. was that sort of the gateway to get you into playing like six button stuff? Like on the camera? Um, no. So it got me into playing DDR. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so around 2008, uh, there was a DDR Extreme at the mall that, that's near my place. So I started playing that because I didn't have anything else to play, right? Yeah, yeah. There was no O2 Jam. Uh, Step Mania FFR got boring. My computer sucked. I couldn't play anything at home. <laughs> yeah, so I started playing DDR at the arcade. Uh, and being the autistic kid that I was, I'd just play like V. I play A. <laughs> I play Colors. Oh my and God. then I started, I started realizing, oh shit, these songs are all from the same game. <laughs> yeah. And they're not from DDR. Yeah, so I started researching that. Uh, so I came across the first 2DX video that I watched was... Dolce's uh, fire fire video, the one where you full combo a mirror or something oh, like that. No way, jeez man. Like, yeah. <laughs> then I, I saw the video and then I started thinking, wait, isn't this O2 Jam by the arcade? <laughs> oh my god, there's O2 Jam arcade. <laughs> yeah, so like I started researching a little. Then I realized, uh, damn, we don't have this game in Singapore. Mm. Yeah, so fast forward maybe one or two years. Uh, the local arcade that's like five minutes from my place, they brought in an offline DJ Troopers. Oh, no way. What year was yeah. this? 2009? Wow. Your your machine yeah. was ahead of our machine because we were stuck <laughs> on Distorted for like four years. <laughs> so, <laughs> god damn. So that must have been huge. Like, having yeah, a yeah, yeah. machine. Yeah, like, so one day I just went to the arcade with like one of my schoolmates there. Like, this, there's this other guy that I played uh, DDR with. Yeah. So I went there then, holy shit, it's 2DX. Like, it appeared, like, without announcement. Like, no one knew it, it was there. And suddenly, shit, we had a new game to play. So that's yeah. why I picked up 2DX. Oh, damn, man. <laughs> it was the same and for I me, think... yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. For, for Box Hill, that arcade I was talking about, same thing. One day, I walk in, 2DX machine, pop and music machine. 
I, I literally freaked out. I remember putting in a credit. I failed the first song. I didn't give a fuck. I was like, it's actually here. These machines actually exist in Melbourne. What the hell? So yeah, same thing for you, I'm guessing. Just mind blown. Yeah. So the thing is that I didn't realize it at the time, but to, yeah, like Valteria mentioned, um, we actually got 2DX, like online 2DX in gold. I didn't know it because I was a kid. I didn't have internet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like, uh, I started playing 2DX like maybe halfway through Empress, but uh, yeah, I started on the offline troopers machine. Mm. Yeah, so I started researching, uh, oh, is there online 2DX in Singapore? Then, oh shit, I realized, yeah, there's, there is online 2DX in Singapore. So I went to the arcades. How far was that from your place? Uh, the one with online 2DX was maybe... 45 minutes from my place. That's not too bad. Uh, I mean, like, in the Singaporean context, it's that's far. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the one side of the island to the other side of the island far. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah, like, I live right there. Like, I live, like, in the northern tip of Singapore. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. The, the online two years was maybe in the south-ish. Okay. So, like, I had, to, I had to travel across the country just to play two years. Man, Cross Even though it's like half an hour. Cross country trek to get to 2DX, man. What a trooper. Yeah. What a trooper. My goodness. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so you had EMUs from like really early on, like gold troopers. Yeah, I think um Singapore, yeah, we got EMUs in gold. Um there were people who like started playing really early. Uh yeah, there were people who were, like clearing twelves by the end of gold. Yeah. Jeez. And um, did you, like, actually interact with any players? Because I know, like, you were always pretty reserved. I.e., you know. Yeah, yeah. Look at Sean saying, fuck this guy, he doesn't talk to anyone. What a what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but did you actually, like, uh, did you actually talk to any of the players, like, when you went there? Or was it just like, man, that guy's really good. I'm scared of him. I'll stay away. Uh, Actually... No, I didn't talk to many of them. Mostly because, like, they were way older than me. They were, like, 10 years older than me. Oh, wow, jeez. Uh, and they were... How do I say this? They were kind of, like, bogans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like... I can relate. Uh, I can relate. <laughs> like, like, in Singapore, we call them abings, which is basically bogans in Australia. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they like, people doing shady business for money... Uh, yeah, I, I didn't really get to talk to them, mostly because I think they didn't like me as well. Oh, well. From, from <laughs> yeah. the get-go, you had this uh, this reputation, I see. <laughs> but yeah, no, the same thing. Like, we used to have people at the local arcade who were just, like, really loud and obnoxious. Yeah, and yeah. I just feel like, oh, no, I don't really want to interact with those people. So Yeah, so, like, the first time I played on, like, online EMUs, uh, there was this guy there. Uh, what's his name? I don't remember his name. Fake money, something like that. Mm. Yeah, like basically he saw me. Shit, there's this tiny kid who wants to play two days. I'm gonna put twenty credits in the machine now. <laughs> so oh, I I couldn't play at all. Like the first time I went to the arcade to play online EMU, yeah, I played like one game, and then this guy played. I'm like, dude, what the hell, man? That's uh, that's a medicate you've got there in Singapore. Just you know, quality, quality uh, yeah. lime. Yes. <laughs> Actually, did I ever tell you about the time when I was in Japan where I I was playing two DX, and there was a guy who like was standing by the machine, but I couldn't tell if it was lighting up. I went up to the <laughs> machine. He stops me, and in Japanese, he's like, "Hey, man." Do you not fucking understand? Like, you know, there's a line here. You gotta wait your turn. Like, he was actually like literally screaming at me in Japanese. It's like you gotta oh, wait in line. I was like, shit. I'm sorry, man. I didn't even know you were you were lining up. So, yeah. Is there a similar yeah, etiquette like, in I, Singapore where, like, you know, you you've got a line or like some way of keeping order of who's whose turn it is? Uh, we mostly just remember like who's going next. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like the lines aren't that long in Singapore. Mostly, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it gets long, but uh, yeah, like, what, what, actually, what is the queue system in Australia if there is, like, I'm sure there is one for, like, DDR, right? So for, for 2DX, this was the really weird one. We used to put a dollar on the machine. 
I oh, so like I Hong Kong. Yeah, but Hong Kong, they use their EMUs cards, don't they? Like, they'll put their EMUs card on the machine. And then there'll just be like this massive line of EMUs cards, because that's what they were doing when I went there back when, you know, I played in, and excuse my pronunciation, but Sim Cha Shui, is it? Star yeah, City? yeah. Yeah. When I went there, mm. they'd line up the EMUs cards in order to, like, same line but yeah we oh interesting yeah whereas we do dollars the, the problem is it's like whose dollar is hu- whose like <laughs> once you reach like an eight person line it's like crap we have no idea whose that is so it, like the system is so redundant because yeah. it doesn't actually tell you it tells you how many people are in the line but not where you are so i used to be smart i'd use like a five cent coin so it stood out so we're like oh there i am oh <laughs> Daniel with the 9,000 IQ play. Brain. And then obviously <laughs> I, I stopped doing that when uh, there was one time because same thing for DDR, they did the same thing that line like the bottom of the monitor. There was one day where a guy just swiped the queue off the monitor and walked out. Took, what? Yeah, he took like eight <laughs> bucks and just walked out. <laughs> and it was like, great. Now we don't know where anyone is and I can't play my game. Cool. But yeah, um, but nowadays for for 2DX, DDR, well, we don't have 2DX here in Melbourne, but for DDR and Pump and like most music games, it's just the same thing, kind of like the honor system. We sort of just yeah. sort of eyeball it and go, okay, that person hasn't gone, that person hasn't gone, they're probably after them. We, you know, you, you logically figure it out. You don't need to actually yeah, like, yeah. queue up, queue up. Um, but I know for my mind, they actually put a system in um, and... Uh, it was it was done by a guy who, funnily enough, got banned from the arcades. And you read the rules for lighting up, and it's the most hostile. Like this is what you've got to do. Like it reads like they're gonna kill you if you don't follow this system. So it's like, okay, uh, yeah. We, we used to have something like that uh, back in what was it, Linko? Yeah. So um, I'm not I'm not sure if you were playing on EMUs back then, but like Linko, do you know this uh, Linko Link event? Uh, the one that you had with with Flank Beat. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember the event, but yeah, we went online at that point, so. Yeah, yeah so like, uh, back then we had one online machine in Singapore, like one 2DX cap in Singapore. Is it the same machine uh, from back when it was gold? Um, no, it was the one, it was the offline troopers machine that I was playing on, that they upgraded to Linko. Oh, no way. <laughs> so, so you went from having to travel 45 minutes and to be cock-blocked by 20 credits to five minutes from home. No, no, they moved it to another arcade, like another time zone. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So like, like back then, because of Linko Link, like um, you could unlock uh, what's it? Reflect beat songs by playing two DX, and you had to play like twenty or thirty credits. So um, the queues back then were like two hours. What? Yeah, like there were like fifteen, ten to fifteen people in the queue. Holy shit. <laughs> The dark ages of 2DX in Singapore. <laughs> let me let me actually ask you about that. I want to hear about the progression of 2DX because you said you know obviously you had the one online machine that was down south. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did it sort of progress, sort of player wise? Were there because you said there weren't a lot of people, and then we sort of skipped the link with like fifteen. Was there a gradual increase in the number of players, or has it always been fairly consistent? Um. There's a big boom in players like when 2DX first appeared in Singapore. Yeah. Um, actually, like, yeah, I think you, you can, they, they come in waves basically. Like, so, like, there's this first wave of players who started playing in gold. Yeah. Um, the second wave would be people like me who started playing in Empress. Um, so, like, every couple of years, you have like a influx of players. Like, you get like five, five or ten new players. Damn, that's that's actually a yeah. lot. That that is actually like a large number because yeah. But like over time, seen actually, I I think two days in Singapore is doing pretty good right now, like compared to a couple of years ago. Like there are actually people playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not just me playing. Was there a point where it was just you, going all the time? Yeah, like I think uh, when was it? Like maybe Pandua or Copula. Oh damn, man. Yeah, like, I think in Pandua, yeah, around Pandua, like, a lot of new people came in. Like, but, like, pre-Pandua, like, maybe Trick Row to Sparta, there were, like, basically, there was basically no one playing. Because, I mean, I know Maya's from Singapore, like, and she was mm-hmm. obviously playing around, because I saw that picture of her playing RA, you know, when she was very, very young. Like, yeah. was she in that same generation as you, or is she, like, earlier or later? Mm, I think we started playing around the same time. 
So like Empress to Sirius ish. Yeah. 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 So she started playing around the same time because I, I was just wondering because you know Maya's very sort of reserved and doesn't talk about it much. So I was like, when did you start <laughs> playing? Uh, that brings me on to another point. Actually, is it like a, a tight knit community there? Like, have you got two DX pros that you talk to? Um, kind of, but we've, uh, like this, there's this bunch of guys that I usually talk to. I mean, we've mostly moved on. It's not really a 2DX group anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's more like a live group. So it's kind of like, but... you know, the, the discord that I'm in with you with like former 2DX players. It's not like active 2DX players. It's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them <laughs> still play 2DX. Uh, yeah. yeah, but some of s- others have moved on, started families, etc. <laughs> yeah no time anymore yeah so like i'm I'm probably like the most active player left i think yeah yeah well it's just because you haven't uh yeah settled down with your family yet obviously <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so i mean but has that been consistent through the whole time so like you know you, you guys have been really solid you know 2dx sort of friends for a while or, or is there like segments of the community like is it segregated where it's like there's those guys who play and we don't really talk to those guys. And there's like these guys who, you know, I'm closer to, but also don't really talk to. And then there's like your tight knit group. Like are there circles? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like in any community you have circles, right? Uh, I think it's actually, I mean, people are friendly with each other, but there are definitely circles. Like, especially like with some of the new, newer players, you can sort of feel like it, there's like an age gap. Yeah. Like for like for you, like if you encounter like say 15 year olds who first start playing DDI the arcade, <laughs> it's kind of hard to talk to them, right? Because of like uh, that age gap, you're like twice their age. It's uh, <laughs> it's funny you mention that because I was recently talking to a player who was like trying to improve their footwork, and they're mm-hmm. talking to me about it. And I think you, you can tell when you're getting old when when you talk to people who are younger. You're just getting frustrated because it's like, God damn it, it's not that complicated. Like, I've told you what to do. Just just do the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's probably also because, you know, I'm dealing with kids all the time every day. So when you have to deal with <laughs> more kids during the day, it's like, oh, no, I can't do it. But yeah. Um, like the new years who are coming in, they are like 10, more than 10 years younger than me. I, th- I thought you were going to say like just 10. I was like, geez, no. this, this is pretty <laughs> young. So we started 2 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, the other thing I wanted to ask about with Singapore is, is there just one location still, or is it sort of branched out now? Um, there are a couple of locations. There's only one Lightning, though. So that's the one I go to. Oh. Uh, yes. The yeah, there lightning. are like maybe, uh, let's see how many are there. One, two, three, four. Four, four places with 2DX now. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. That's actually really good. And I think... Do you reckon that's due to the introduction of Lightning? Do you reckon there's just a surplus of cabinets now in Japan that they're trying to, like, throw out to Asia? Oh, no, no, no. No, like, all these cabinets came in really long ago. Yeah. Uh, Like, most of them came in, like, during the gold to Empress era. Uh, We got two Korean caps, which suck. No one wants to play on them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, so I mostly go to the one with Lightning. Uh, mm. Has that been your, your, your constant one the whole time, or have you sort of moved around over the last couple of years? Um, ever since Lightning came out, like, I've been going to this one arcade. Yeah. Yeah. But did yeah. you previously, like, travel around to the various arcades before that, or did you always have, like, one place where you're like, no, nah, that's the one I'm going to go to? Mm, I mostly went to one, uh, mostly because it's, like, it's the setup that I was used to. Uh do they run the setups heavier over in Singapore? Like you, what you play on? Yeah, so uh, like what Space Dog mentioned in the comments. Um, there's this place that I used to go to like pre-Lightning, uh, Next. So we have two cabs there. Yeah. Uh, one of them is running, I think 50, 60. Yeah. And the other is like 50, 20 or something. I don't, I don't remember. But I used to play on the heavier setup. Have you yeah. always just preferred the heavier setup in general? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you've probably heard about my arcade setup, which was 100-100, question mark. 100-100's <laughs> great. Because, <laughs> I mean, that that was probably what you started playing on, right? Like, back... Yeah, yeah. Because that was the stock, and obviously, when the cabinets came across, they're like, well, we're not going to change the stock, so, you know. 
you know, you're playing on the heaviest, heaviest stuff. And that's the thing, like back then you didn't think about it or care about it. Yeah, which is like, there's something I wanted to talk about as well, like yeah. uh, setups and how I think people fuss too much about setups. Yeah. Um, like, like I've, I've had people ask me, uh, my stamina is bad. Should I switch out my setup for something that's lighter? And 99% of the time I'd say no. Yeah. It's mostly an issue of technique. Like if you're getting tired playing on like 50, 60, it's definitely your technique. Man, 50, 60 uh, is child's play. Yeah, you get on that. It's <laughs> like, please. <laughs> yeah, like I've, I've played on like 200, 200 before. Oh, uh, was that in Tri Tower? Was that the one machine like in the middle in Tri Tower? I, I, I oh, think so. Yeah. Oh my god, that cabinet. I remember playing that as well and just being like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I triple A like Golden Cross on it, so. <laughs> but I think. And this is one thing that a lot of people have noticed about you as a player, though, is that, man, you are, like, freaking strong when you hit the keys. Like, it's so clean when you're hitting. Um, it sounds, it sounds louder than it is, actually. Yeah? I don't hit that hard, actually. I think. <laughs> because, no, well, that's the thing. Like, the, the taps are so clean that it sounds like you are literally, as someone said in the... The, the chat like gushing the whole way through it sounds like you were just muscling through the charts no but like when i'm playing like my hands are moving maybe like like this yeah like it's not that much uh i don't hit very hard unless it's like i'm playing like a five or something uh <laughs> it just okay uh it, it sounds loud because you hit clean like mm. uh it's not loud because i'm hitting hard it's because it's clean like, if, you, if your key taps are mushy, you sound mushy, like, no matter how hard you're hitting. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting, because, yeah, like, everyone I've spoken to is just like, man, he, he's such a powerful hitter. And as, as Seal's saying here, when he goes to the arcade, he can hear you hitting from, like, outside the arcade. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually that hard, I don't think. Like, I've, I've definitely seen harder hitters, like, you know, JDR... Oh man, JDR is an absolute animal. When he hit, like the whole cabinet would vibrate like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so like, messed up. Like he's playing tense and like like you can see like you know you know like the old cats where they have like the metal frame with the speakers. You can see the frame moving. Did you actually meet him <laughs> when you went over to Japan? Uh I did actually get to talk to him. I saw him playing. Yeah. Yeah, I was like passing by where's that place? Aichi or Toyohashi? It's probably Aichi, yeah. Like, I was passing by, I just happened to pop by this uh, uh, arcade while I was waiting for the Shinkan Sen. And shit, this guy, he's like beasting in tens. Yeah, he, he was an absolute animal at tens and, and 11s and stuff. <laughs> like, he, he had the world record for I Am for years. Wow. Like, he held it for, like, pretty much up until, I think, Copular or something like then. Like, from, from Empress till then. Because he had a video, <laughs> he had a video getting like max minus twenty one on S ran. Uh -huh. That was up on Nico Nico, and yeah, like I remember Dolce posted a score for it back in Sparta, and it tied that record, but he didn't <laughs> beat it. I was like, holy crap! Like for his time, he was an absolute monster. Yeah, like uh, yeah. So like, I don't think I hit that hard. Definitely, there are people who hit harder than me. Uh, it just sounds really loud because it's clean. So how, how did you get to that point, though, where you're hitting so clean and so clearly? Like, what what led to that? Because, you know, I'm at the point where I can't do that. Like, what, when did that sort of transition start happening? Mm, actually, mostly, I started working on that in Penduel, Copula-ish. That was, like, around the time that Sean was playing. Yeah. Yeah, then, like, I saw him play, because Sean hits really hard as well. Like... JDR level of hitting. Oh wow! Explain yeah, why that's it's so how... tough now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So, yeah. so you, like, you, was it because of him and hearing him hit hard, or was it just sort of thinking about it, going, "Oh, maybe I should try and make my taps cleaner"? Or yeah, yeah. Like it, I did actually like work on my key taps per se, but like I, I was thinking, God, I need to start scoring better on tens and elevens, and. Like, it just naturally came about. Uh, like, back then, I think it, like, 
two weeks in Singapore, it's kind of weird, right? Because like, there's no one to talk to. Uh, like we aren't really like, uh, like well linked up with uh, the Western community. So like back then, I didn't know like, oh, you got to hit clean, you got to hit hard, or you got to play relaxed. I just did like whatever the hell I wanted to, and oh shit, it works. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just happened to like chance upon like this technique. So <laughs> I, uh, I'd say I I'd actually attribute it a lot to BMS. Because BMS forces you to hit clean, right? Like, if you don't hit clean, you're going to get hurt, like, really quickly. Yeah, and, and that brings mm. me on to, you know, when I watched you do Gengalzo, the 24-minute the one. <laughs> like, no, like, within the first, like, the first four minutes, I'm like, yeah, Kali's got this. But when you reach, like, the 12-minute mark, I was like, how is he still going? Like, actually, how are you still going? Because... Yeah, like, I remember messaging you halfway through, just going wisely, what the fuck, like... <laughs> <laughs> so does that just come down to having, like, a proper technique, kind of like, as you said, I think you said it back then, kind of like flat-footing in, in ITG stuff, like... Um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's, yeah, it's like flat-footing in ITG or DDR, where uh, you still hit clean, but you're conserving stamina. And I think it all comes down to be, like, uh, to... to like being really comfortable with the BPM, being really comfortable with your play style, uh, because and and of course comfortable with reading, right? Because that's where you can like stay really relaxed. You can conserve energy. You can hit clean. Uh, and actually, like that's something that I picked up from BMS, which uh, carried over to two EX. Yeah, I think that's like the one thing that I learned from BMS. So say, all right, so for a player like me, because you've seen me play recently, like on streams and stuff, mm -hmm. like if you had to give one point of advice on how to move forward, so you, you see that I'm like absolute dog shit at density, right? <laughs> what, what, what would you recommend to sort of improve it? Um, I, I, I think uh, just play more. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I think uh like at the point where you are you're like you sort of know how to improve um you know like what are your weak areas and because of that you know how to work on it right so like the key is just to play more but like for someone who's starting out uh someone who isn't very comfortable with playing yet uh i'd say uh pick up a play style that really works so nowadays there's like 1048 yeah. Um, and you just get really comfortable with it. Just play a lot. Mm. So is it something Stay that relaxed. Just, it, so you're saying it's something that just naturally happens. So if you play a lot, your hands will just naturally adjust to doing that. Yeah, because like, um, um, you know, in the in your previous chat with Jordan, like the whole thing about like overreaching. Yeah. Uh, where you go, where you're going beyond your comfort zone. Oh shit! Like. Um, <laughs> Just like hell? just like a camera going out of its comfort zone there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like um that's where like you actually learn to hit relax because like you're starting to tire out. Uh you're like sort of forced to play relax. Like if you don't relax, you're just gonna your hands are just gonna lock out and you can you, you you can't play anymore, right? So uh that's yeah, I I I I played a lot of BMS, like trying to do that, uh, working on stuff like little hearts, oh, like the, the 200 BPM range stuff and like just playing it over and over until like you start getting tired. That's where the gains start coming. <laughs> so it's, it's literally just like, you know, hitting the gym and <laughs> it, it, it is, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause when I start to gas out like that, I just, I can't keep going. Like I, I try to, but I think, yeah. Yeah. So like, like. That point is where you start uh, start playing relax, where you force you're forced to play relax, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and I think is it sort of replicating that feeling when you're tired of hitting, when you've got the energy? Because I've noticed with, for example, I tried what was it, double A rebuild recently, mm -hmm. and I went into the start going, okay, I'm not gonna like jam super duper hard at the start here. I'll sort of ease off a bit. Like, is that that feeling that you're talking about where you, you learn to hit controlled, but not super duper hard? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, 
yeah, it's all it's all about being comfortable with your technique. Uh, ah, oh, how do I put this? Yeah, it's it's just about being like really comfortable with hitting relaxed because like a lot of people when they start out they they thinking like oh I got to tense up I got to hit hard to get a P grade because that's how they first get used to hitting the P grade window right like when you're not comfortable with it you tense up you you gotta like put your hundred percent into it before you get a P grade but like once you start learning how to play relaxed uh and you start applying it to like the start of your session. I think that's where you see like a lot of timing gains come from. Well, that's actually super insightful because I don't think I've spoken to anyone about, you know, the strength of hitting. Like I know that Matt talked about, what was it? The the flick technique or whatever it was, the, the tapping technique thing. Yeah. But yeah, no one's actually talked about the tension because I mean, you watch me, I, I freaking try and jam through every song. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I gas out super quick, like within the, the first like hour, I'm already like dead. So that's uh, something to keep in mind for sure. Um, yeah, like, I think the, like, that flicking thing that you and Matt were talking about, like, it's something that all good players eventually discover, like, whether it's someone else telling them or they discover it on their own. Like, I, I've, I figured it out on my own. Like, uh, I think I'm really lucky that I figured that out. <laughs> when do you think you started um, to, to sort of apply it, though? Like, what style? Um, maybe quite recently actually rootage heroic verse wow so it's something that you've recently sort of started doing yeah it's like it's like around the period where i started like posting a lot of scores uh like in the past one year i think yeah uh, like the last year or so dude the stuff you've been posting has been pretty insane <laughs> like i think one of the standout ones for me was your pendules that you posted recently <laughs> that was that was gorgeous, yeah. man what the hell yeah like um i figured that out like at the same time where i started reading a bit faster like i used to read pretty slow i read at like 300 like in rootage jeez what the hell man like like 300 <laughs> green number wow and then like when, when lightning came out i started forcing myself to read faster i'm reading at 258 right now yeah because i noticed you were around 250 on your stream the other day and i was like shit were you always reading that fast yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to read faster. Yeah. And do you think that's just yeah. a natural evolution of, you know, trying to hit density more accurately? I think so. Um, the thing with density is that past a certain point, like, you can't really comprehend it, right? Like, when you're reading at 300 green number, you have, like, a thousand notes on your screen. You can't comprehend it. So uh, I realized that by dropping my green number, you could basically slice up what you're looking up to smaller chunks. Yeah. It makes it a bit easier to process, especially for like swung stuff. Oh, dude, swung stuff, I fucking yeah. hate it. <laughs> it's so hard to do. Yeah. But yeah, think... so like, yeah, back in Rootage, like I was reading at like 290, 300, and like I couldn't make sense of stuff like uh, Children's Sketchbook, Tokyo Shinwa. Like it made no sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a mess of stuff. And uh, it, it does, like, coming back to Taisuke, funnily enough, like, back in, like, pre, pre-Lightning, pre he was reading at, like, 260-something. And yeah. that blew my mind. I was like, what? how the hell do you read that fast? Yeah, and, like, it's it's not like he used a massive offset to no. compensate for that, right? He was reading at, like, zero. Yeah, yeah, which is insane. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I was reading at, like, 300 green number and, and negative offset. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. <laughs> Uh, but is is that a common trend? Because I remember, who was it? Um, back in Tricora, I was helping Maurice grind out the Tricora War event. And I noticed mm -hmm. he was reading at like 320 or something like that. Is it common for like most Singaporean players to be reading slower? Or is it just like you as a fringe case? Uh, I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't know what other people read at, but like I think generally people in Singapore read at like two eighty. Oh yeah, two eighty to three hundred. Uh, that's like the general trend. Yeah. Like even uh, probably in the West as well, right? Like most people read at that green number. So do you reckon that people should be trying to force it lower? Yeah, like I think anything above three hundred is like too slow. Oh, uh, mostly because. 
Yeah, because like you have like like what I said earlier, you have like too much information on the screen. You can't process it. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. Work, working on lowering the green number is something that's probably going to help long term. Yeah, and like um, the thing I've seen with a lot of people uh, in Singapore and overseas as well is like people try a green number that's lower for like five songs, and then they they start thinking, "Oh shit, this is too fast. I can't read it." And then they go back to their old green number. But the green number is something like, uh, when I dropped my green number from like 290 to 265, which is what I started using on Lightning at first, it took me like two months to get used to it. Wow, jeez. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's a gradual change sort of thing. It's not something that obviously is going to happen overnight. It's kind of like random. Yeah, it's like, it's something that uh, it, benefits, it benefits you in the long run, but at the start, it's going to be trash. It's going to be hard. Yeah, so obviously pushing through and trying to do that and get used to that is going to you know, be a long-term benefit. It brings me back because I listened to the random video I put out like years ago and it was the same thing. Like, I still remember this. Like, when I put out that random video, I remember going on Twitter and someone was like, oh, okay, I'm going to start using random now. And then an hour later they posted saying, man, fuck random, it doesn't help. I'm not going to use it anymore. <laughs> it's like within an hour. It's like, come on, man, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Yeah, like, like most people, like when I first started using random, I was playing like maybe nines or tens. It yeah. took me months to get used to it. Yeah, no, and it does. It's it's. Uh, yeah. This is one of the things with two DX. It's just it's such a long game. Like if you want to improve, like it, it it really does take a lot of commitment. And um, that's that's another thing I wanted to ask you. Like, have you actually come up against any big walls with the game? Because I know that you know Matt came up against one. I'm obviously constantly battling against one because I'm like retired, they're not retired. What about you? Because you played consistently this whole time. Like, have you encountered anything that's sort of just been like a hard stick? Mm, yeah. I I mean, I feel like I'm encountering walls all the time, actually. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like things like... So like I've been I've been like trying to break down this wall like scratching, uh, like the stuff like long train running, beside bunny, like I've I've been hard stuck on these songs for like years. Like my scores haven't really gone up. Yeah. Uh, I mean I've been working a lot on long train running recently. I saw it scores you, you tried last night and dude that run that I saw before I fell asleep was really fucking good. Yeah, like um I used to get like a mid A on it, like yeah. maybe. You, Two two years ago. <laughs> so, what would you advise with scratching? Because I remember I messaged you saying, "I don't know how the hell you actually muscled through that." Like, I, and you gave me a bit of advice. I think you said that um, knowing knowing the scratch patterns helps a lot. Yeah, like I think for personally for me, like knowing the scratch patterns actually helped a lot because, like, when you know the scratch patterns, it's easier for you to play relax, right? Whereas, like, if you're re playing it solely based off sight, like. Uh, especially for stuff like long train running, where there's a lot of scratches, there are fast scratches, there are slow scratches. Uh, you tense up a lot, and that's where like all your stamina goes to shit. Do you actually practice the movement itself? Because one thing I've noticed a lot, because you know I'm dog shit at scratching too. Like I, I read the scratches and try and react to them, which just doesn't work. Right? Um, I've always noticed <laughs> like I'm on, on starting with the wrong hand or doing the wrong movement or something like that. Do you actually practice yeah, yeah. the movement and go, okay, I've got to start on a down scratch or start on an up or anything like that? Um, when I first started working on scratch songs, yes. So like you listen to like those hand clap scratch, uh, hand clap videos and try to like visualize like how you're going to do it. Right. Nowadays, I just like, just play the songs over and over. <laughs> and that, that sort of gets you there. Um, yeah. yeah one, one of the big things for me was, you know, triplets, you know, it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. You know, it took me until like, I think it was Sparta to realize, hang on, if I do a one, two, three, I've got to do it the opposite direction for the next one. <laughs> I used to always try and do it the same way. <laughs> yeah. It's like mind blown. Like just knowing where to start it, like changed everything. I think nowadays, uh, what I do is like, I try to remember like how it feels. So like, uh, like do I start this scratch up? Is it down? Uh, how long do I scratch for? Maybe it's like nine scratches. Um, I think there was this, ah, uh, when was this? Dolce talked about this recently, not recently, but like 
he talked about this once where he basically does it uh, by ear. Like you, you've probably seen videos of him playing like with the scratch laying covered, and he see he still does it really well. Uh, there, there's an element of memory to playing scratch songs, I think. Yeah, which which doesn't apply to you know ninety percent of the game. I think that scratch yeah. is its own unique thing that you've got to really, really work on. Which mm -mm -mm. obviously, I've been a bad boy. I didn't do my homework on that one. So. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the best at scratching either, so. I mean, come on! I, I saw you almost ex hard LTR last night, and you can't say you're bad at scratching when you almost get that. Like Jesus Christ, man, it's insane. Um, actually, while we're on the topic of scratching, I wanted to talk to you to you about LM actually, mm -hmm. and, and the scratch there because last night you were saying, man, you should try this on an LM. It's a joke, right? Like, does it actually yeah. feel like a wider window, or is it just more consistent, or like, has it changed? Um, uh, two things. Uh, firstly, like the dead zone is tiny now. Like you can do like this and you get all P grades. <laughs> <laughs> and, and secondly, yeah, it feels more consistent. Like it's, it's not like, like, you know, on like first gen caps where you scratch, sometimes you get a good, like, even though you feel like you scratched on like, like on point, uh, it, 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 I think it mostly comes down to like the dead zone and how it's like really small now hmm. so what yeah. about what about the the phoenix wan in comparison because that's got a pretty small dead zone too like uh i'd say it's comparable but uh the phoenix one feels like there's a slight delay to the input compared to lightning model so the lightning's more responsive than the pw yeah that blows my mind because the Phoenix one's literally the best turntable I've ever played on. So, <laughs> like, so the Phoenix one's like really, uh, it's really responsive, mm. but you got to scratch slightly earlier compared to Lightning model. Like Lightning model, like I think Tyske can fuck for this. Like, you scratch how you scratch normally on the old cap, you get like all fast goods. Yeah, that's how responsive it is. Wow, what the hell, man? Yeah, that's so bizarre. So, is that why you don't play as much at home? Because of the turntable discrepancies. Yeah, like uh Infinitas with the Phoenix one feels like it feels good, it's just really different compared to lightning. So it's it's still different because yeah. like Matt said it's pretty much almost one to one, with the exception of the turntable, so I mean mm. do you feel like it's the same or uh I'd say scratching on LM is actually a little harder because it's it's okay. It's not easier per se, but it's like really accurate. So if you do it perfectly, you get all P grades. If you do it like shit, you you still go to get shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas like, I feel like with the Phoenix one, like you can sort of like mash a little. You can mash the scratches a little, and it still gives you pretty good P grades. <laughs> so, so I don't know how else to describe this. So you can't do that sort of similar mash on the the cabinet. Then. Yeah, like you, yeah, you can't. But I mean, if you still had to choose, though, you'd still choose the AC scratch over Phoenix one, though. Yeah, like the only the only thing I like the bad thing about the lightning scratch is like the turntable material. It's like really slippery. Yeah, what's up with that? Because I noticed you and Matt said it. Like, is it just is it like the old gen turntables? You know how it had all that leathery surface, or what kind of surface is it? Um. It's sort of like, uh, I don't know how else to describe this. It's sort of like the old, you know, the Empress era ones where there's, it's like rubbery, but at the same time, like sweat, uh, really fucks it up oh, like bad. No. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I had one of those Empress covers. Um, you know, one of the Chinese made ones. I, I had yeah. it on for one session and I took it off. So I was like, oh, you know, the, the pattern will probably help. No, it didn't. It made it worse. Like, the the, yeah, the, the default surface was better. Yeah, like, uh, like the, the lightning material is fine if you don't have uh, sweaty palms. But, like, once you start sweating, you, like, you can't scratch at all. Like, your hands will just, like, glide over it. Oh, no. Yeah, because yeah. I've got that problem as well. Like, I, my, my hands get really sweaty as well. Um it's like they took the worst possible surface and made that the TT material. Great. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, they had to nerf it somehow. Of course, like, I the scratch is like otherwise perfect. 
<laughs> so, so let me put a theoretical here. What if you had a lightning turntable with the Phoenix Wan uh, surface? Oh man, that'd be so good. Because <laughs> you know they they nailed the Phoenix One material, like whatever that glossy yeah. material they use. Oh my god, it's perfect. It's like glossy, but at the same time, like once you start sweating a little, it becomes sticky or tacky. I don't know how else to describe it. So, like so you never your your head, yeah, your head just like sticks to it. You know, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, that that's like the perfect material. You know, years and years you go by trying to find what's good. That's it. That's like. Every cab needs to have that on it. I mean, I can understand why they don't, because you know how as soon as one piece of dust lands on it, that piece of dust <laughs> yeah. <like> sticks out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, other than that, yeah, it's, it's good to hear that there's, you know, pluses and minuses of both. Like, it's not like one or the other's more perfect. By the right, of yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, but it, on that note, though, it is good to see you playing at home a little bit more, like... I, I know that your streams are a bit sporadic, but have you like, have you noticed any differences after going from home to arcade now that you've started playing at home a little bit more or is it? Uh, I mean, the, the biggest difference definitely is screen size. Like I think the lightning screen is like 42 inches. Uh, Wait, is it 42? I thought it was still I, like 36. No, it's like 40 or 42. I don't know. It's like yeah. big. Yeah. It's and I, I hope I'm playing on the, 31 so like definitely there are some differences there right mm. which is why like my settings like my green number etc is like completely different at home I'm, I'm trying to like get something that's actually similar to lightning still feels really off yeah <laughs> have you considered some of those like big 40 inch 120 hertz monitors like the one that that matt's using uh i have i don't have the space for it <laughs> i'm just looking at your room now i'm like yeah what the hell are you gonna put that thing <laughs> Yeah, it's like, if you're going to get something that big, uh, it's going to be like a dedicated setup, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, for someone like you, like, you can at least consider it. For someone like me who just, you know, is a casual Andy, just, uh, it's not worth the investment, I don't think. So. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I mean, I've considered. I just don't think it's that feasible right now. Yeah. So, I mean, is that for you specifically, or but in general as well? Do you reckon it's a necessary thing? Uh, no, it's not necessary. But, like, if you want to get something that's similar to Lightning, uh, getting a bigger screen would be good. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, because, like, uh, like the main differences between uh, Lightning and my home setup is screen size, and the audio feels a little off still. Really? Yeah. That's really surprising, actually, that you said that the audio is off. Because, mm. I mean, you're playing on, what is it, was Wasapi or whatever it is? The Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, so it's still off, slightly. Uh, Yeah, it's still slightly off. Actually, the thing is that at home, I think the latency is better than on Lightning. Wait, actually? <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is it's more accurate at home than it is on the cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... I hope like I, I try to compensate for this by hitting slightly later and then I get like all slows because I overcompensate. I was wondering why you were getting so many slows because I was like, yeah, hey, it's not like wisely to hit like this slow normally. That's that's bizarre. Yeah, because like I try to time like uh by audio, I get like all yeah. fast, then I'll switch to timing visually, I get all slows, and <laughs> then I bounce between the two. <laughs> There's no winning. Uh, Matt yeah. also mentioned when I, I spoke to him two weeks ago that like is, isn't the monitor like ghosty as shit on the lightnings as well yeah it is it's like a really shitty it is 120 hertz but it's a pretty shitty one yeah because yeah. yeah he said that his monitor at home is better than, than lightning because yeah yeah no doubt <laughs> like I think um, like even when I'm playing at like um, 250 green number like the ghosting is pretty obvious and like Ben plays way faster than I do. Yeah, he plays at what, like two forty or something crazy like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I just, I, I can't imagine those speeds. Like at that point, like yeah, <laughs> it just. It, uh... I, I've never gone lower than like two sixty. So yeah, like, do you compensate mm. with the ghosting? Because I've noticed that a lot of you guys have like a very short lane as a result. Like, yeah. Like, does that sort of compensate for that ghosting? Um, it does. I, I think the reason why, like, a lot of people play with, like, small, smaller lanes nowadays is because, like, 
when you have a lower green number, like if you're gonna play at like two hundred white number, the nodes are gonna zoom by. Yeah. Uh, it's like yeah, Mitzvah. like like have you watched Mitsuba recently? Like he's come back. Yeah, he, he he plays at like two fifty, yeah, and like his, his shuttle is like. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy though. Like the notes are just flying. Like yeah, I just like I think some people can do it. Not everyone. Most of us, we just uh we just lower the lower the window so that it's a little easier to read. Yeah, yeah. I remember because one time when you know back in Pendul, I was streaming. I actually had Sean come in, and he said, "Hey, have you considered lowering your your white number?" like significantly it might actually help and like at, at 270 i don't think it makes a huge difference like at those mm-hmm. higher green numbers i don't think it changes because i i did it because i was like you know open-mindedness give it a shot right <laughs> but i just yeah at, at that green number i didn't think it made much of a difference but at the higher green numbers do you reckon it's pretty much essential for most people to lower their white number as a result i think so yeah uh, I mean, based on what I see, like people like Yutaka, Wello, they play like two hundred green number. Uh, their white number is like I mean, if you add up like the shutter, the sudden plus plus the lift is like five to six hundred. Mm. Yeah, that's like the trend nowadays. Yeah, just have the teeny yeah. tiny window where the notes are just like flying like this fast. It's kind of like um. What was it? Like playing sudden in DDR with like a really low speed. <laughs> yeah, it's like um it's basically just to reduce the amount of information that's on screen. Yeah. When you're when you're playing stuff like I don't know, like Mario or Gandir, Legendaria. When you're playing at like three hundred green number, you're gonna have a hundred notes on screen. Like literally a hundred notes on screen. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously you wanna reduce that. As much yeah. as you can. All right, well, that's that's a few things to keep in mind moving forward, I guess, because I I'm still trying to obviously adjust to my setup constantly due to retirement. Um, now I I realized because I just it dawned on me like the the topic for the like the title of what we're going to talk about was 2DX in Asia, and like we talked a lot about you, we we've like barely touched on 2DX in Asia. <laughs> we talked for an hour, and we haven't touched on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll move across now because I think the the one thing you did want to discuss with me was just the fact that for a lot of Westerners, like they don't really think of two DX outside of Japan and Korea. Like, you know, a lot of the focus is yeah. there. But I mean, from you because you grew up in in those areas, so for like you know Singapore, Malaysia, sort right. of those areas. Like, what's the scene like now? Because you said it's been pretty consistent. Um. I'd say the scene in Asia is actually pretty big. Uh, there are a lot of players, especially in like Hong Kong and Taiwan, Macau, maybe not so much in Singapore, but like these other countries, they actually have a lot of new players. Uh, yeah, the thing with like Asia is that most people in the West don't actually know what's going on here, right? Like. People, when, when people think of people from, uh, people in the West, when they think of people from Asia, they think of people like Rocha, yeah. maybe me, I don't know. But like, they don't really know anyone else, right? But like, there's like a huge community here and like, there are like some really good players, people like Abby. Oh yeah, Abby's uh, insane. Yeah, I mean, he, he got like Thor's Hammer AAA like years ago. Mm. <laughs> Do you think it's mostly because of the language barrier? Because, I mean, your communities are primarily sort of Chinese-based in communication. Yeah, yeah. part of your groups. And I get a post from that group. I can't read anything. So I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's mostly because, like, uh, people in Taiwan and Hong Kong, well, mostly Taiwan, like, their English isn't their first language. Uh, And it's, like, extra hard to talk about a game in a second language. Oh, yeah. 100%. (laughs) Yeah, uh, but for Singapore, like you guys mostly speak both, right? You're both, you know, English and, mm. and Chinese, so it, it yeah, makes it easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one thing I was going to ask about is like, is there some like a degree of competitive rivalry between the different countries? Like, is is Taiwan actually number one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Singaporean me says no. Yeah. Uh. 
<laughs> I, I think generally Taiwan and Hong Kong has like the, the, the huge share of good players. Yeah. yeah. But but is it like yeah. competitive between it? It's like, god damn, those Taiwanese guys are doing better than us, you know. Singapore. No, nah, I mean it, it, it's it's <laughs> it's not to that it's not it's not to that extent. Yeah. But like there there's nef- definitely a degree of like friendly competitiveness, like some rivalry. Who have you got as a sort of active rival from other parts of Asia at the moment? Uh couple of people. So people like uh Rocher. Yeah. I have, um, I'm not sure if you know Brock. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what he goes by now. He's from Hong Kong, right? Yeah, there are like a couple of Hong Kong and Taiwanese players. Yeah. Is the scene still booming over in Hong Kong? Because when I was there, there was quite a lot of plays. Like, I, you know, I visited when it was RA. So this is like years and years and years ago. But right. are they still like quite strong over there? Like in terms of how many active players they got? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not so close to that community nowadays like the chinese communities but mm. uh back when i was talking to them actively maybe cannonballers to rootage ish yeah yeah the scene was pretty big there damn man yeah because the, yeah. there are a lot of players in that area i just wonder about yeah. the arcades because i know star city closed down and smart game closed down which are like the two arcades i love the most there so yeah like uh, so yeah uh, do they have lightning over there as well uh yeah they have lightning in hong kong taiwan macau has two lightnings in the same arcade wait they got two in one arcade yeah how did they manage that like <laughs> um gotta ask rocha about that though <laughs> yeah definitely do um yeah but like i think the scene in asia is doing pretty well like uh it's doing well enough for us to have a tournament like two years ago <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw the pictures from your tournament. Was that a, like, legit Konami one? Like, did you have Konami reps there? Um, no. We did have Yutaka there. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. So, yeah, because I was wondering if it was, like, a legit thing or was it a community-run thing? Um, yeah, it's a, it was a mostly community-run thing. I think Konami sponsored some of the prizes. Oh, I good. don't remember. Uh... Yeah, but it was mostly community run. Like it was definitely organized by like local players. Hmm. Damn, really nice. And uh, I, I'm actually curious who won that. Um, this guy called Tada. Uh, he's actually a fairly new player, relatively. I'm surprised you actually got beaten. Where's he from? Uh, he's from Taiwan. Like I think he started playing. Picoro, Spada. Oh, wow. So he's really new. Yeah. And he's like really good. He got like max minus 60 on implantation, like on command. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Okay. So Taiwan is legitimately number one, like not actually joking. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing is that he doesn't even play that much. Really? Yeah. So he's, he's a casual who's still better than most of the people who are playing. Yeah. So if he was actually... <laughs> wait, how old is he? Is he like, you know, early 20s or... Um, I don't actually know. Maybe 24, 25 this year. He's slightly younger than me, if I remember correctly. So he's still got a fair few number of years as well, so he could get better. Yeah. That's, that's really and like, scary, man. And the thing is that he doesn't have access to Lightning. He doesn't play all that much. And his scores are still really good. <laughs> That's that's actually terrifying. So say he all right, let's let's put him in a perfect scenario. Say that he's got lightning, say that he's got EMU's access, he's got all of those things. Yeah. Do you reckon that he could probably hit ranker level? Um I'd say he'd be pretty close to Matt's level. I mean not exactly at Matt's level, but pretty close. Damn man. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, I, I just think of players, like, the, the first thing that comes to mind straight away is Derek. Like, you know how Derek was just, like, you know, this random guy from Hawaii. who's like, <laughs> top ranker level back in Sparta. Yeah. So, is it, is, so are there, like, low-key rankers over in, in Asia that probably could compete? Um, maybe not at a ranker level, but definitely there are a lot of good players in Asia that most people in the West don't know of. Yeah. So so that was one yeah. one of them. Um who else would 
I mean, I know there's Roger as well, who's you know just an absolute beast at or like the low level stuff. Yeah. Um, are there other players like you mentioned Rock as well? Like that's an old old school name. Yeah, yeah. like um, he got like what was it? Like Beatside Bunny, like he almost triple dated like years ago. <sighs> yeah, I remember seeing yeah. Lies score on it, and I was like, "What the fuck?" He had like a mid mid double A hard clear on it back in RA. <laughs> Yeah, like, and people don't realize it, but like, scratching like pre linko is actually impossible. Oh, it was. It was freaking <laughs> nuts. So anyone with anything above an A on it is just an absolute machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think back when Beats Are Bunny first came out, like Dolce was getting like border triple A's on it. Yeah. So that's how scratch. That's how hard scratching was on like old caps. Yeah, pre linko scratching was just disgusting. So <laughs> the fact that people were getting double A's is just insane. Like, yeah, like, and the thing with, like, Asia is that people are generally really good at scratching for some reason. Like, the top players in Asia, like, other than me, I'm trash at scratching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who are the scratch gods, then? Let's let's get some player names out. Um, You have people like, uh, what's it, Ice Wilson. Yeah. Is Wilson yeah, still he's... playing, or is he too busy getting, you know, in trouble with China? <laughs> <laughs> He still plays uh, every now and then. He got like long train running full combo. What? God damn. Yeah. I think he, he full comboed like all the scratch songs except for Beats at Bunny. I don't know. Oh, yeah, so like there's Wilson, there's Rock who triple A like the big scratch songs. Uh... I'm curious, how's Roger at scratching? I haven't seen her playing scratch songs in a while. Mm. She triple A like the chase, so she's better. Oh, damn! <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. Okay, jeez, that's insane. Because yeah, I've, I've played it what twice now, and I'm just scared of that thing. I don't want to go anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the chase is like just really hard because of the ending. Yeah, the ending is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so like I think people in general. Like in Asia, like really good at scratching for some reason. Mm. I don't know why. This brings yeah. us on to the other strength of Asia. Um, now I put it in the the description for this uh, noodles, yeah, as you like <laughs> to call them. Now, as you're probably aware, like compared to most players, you are like disgustingly good at charge notes. Uh huh. Now, do you attribute that? Do you attribute that to O2 Jam, or is there something else that you sort of realized with the combination of things? Uh, O2 Jam helps with reading. Uh, I played a lot of like long note BMS back today. So when did you start mm. getting into like long note BMS? Was that when you were just standard playing BMS, or was it something that you sort of focused on for a while? Uh, it's been a while, like, uh, like back when I first discovered BMS. So like there was maybe Resort Anthem ish, yeah. So like, I mostly played from like you know the insane scale, right? Yeah. Then like I I started getting bored of it because I was hitting walls here and there. So I started branching out to like long note scratch BMS. So that's where I discovered uh, long note BMS. I I got into it like, uh, for a long time. I think that's where it all started. Uh, and oh, oh, it's mostly because I find like touch notes fun. So I play a lot of it. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like you're one of the few people that plays charge notes. It's like, oh, this is fun. Whereas everyone else is like, this chart sucks. It's so hard. It's too many noodles. Dude, Diamond Crossing is great. <laughs> so I think the, the one thing we all need to uh, address is uh, your diet. Now, obviously, Jordan Yo talked a lot about having a lot of carbohydrate and obviously you live in Singapore, you know, the capital, the noodle capital of the world. Um, <laughs> do you actually eat a lot of noodles? Need to know. Uh, every other day, maybe. Yeah. Have it for breakfast, have it for lunch, have it for dinner. Noodles like anytime. <laughs> so like, you're never going to say no to noodles, obviously. <laughs> no, because we have like so many different kinds of noodles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if if someone wanted to get good at charge notes, what's the go to noodle meal that they need to be eating? Ah, uh, hmm. Ah, uh, Singaporean noodles. You got to try laksa. 
Laksa. Yeah. So I let Rocha try it once in Singapore. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> it? It's like a curry-ish sort of noodle. It's like spicy seafood noodles with like coconut milk. It's creamy. Uh, hmm. It's sort of like ramen. Oh yeah. So it's like a yeah, spice, but it's like a spicy ramen sort of thing. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting choice. Because I would have thought you said Singapore noodles, you know, go the national dish. <laughs> uh, no, national dish. Actually, hmm, what is the national dish? I don't know. Because, <laughs> yeah, when I think of Singaporean noodles, like that was my go-to for like a whole number of years, but I don't think it helped my charge notes that much. So obviously I was eating the wrong noodle dish. <laughs> I, think, I think with charge notes is that uh, people tend to tense up too much when playing charge notes. Yeah, like the, the funny part is, yeah, when you're holding down the key, every single other one of your fingers is then all of a sudden just, you know, the, all the strength is gone because you can't lift as much. <laughs> yeah, so like it, it comes back to technique, right? Like hitting clean. Uh, the thing with charge notes is that you've got to maintain hitting clean while holding down like one or more notes on that hand. Yeah, so how the hell do you do that? Because, you know, remember how I said to you, I was like, how the fuck does somebody hold down a key and press another key? It makes no sense. <laughs> well, firstly, you got to get used to holding down the key in the first place. Yeah. But, but yeah. what are you doing with your other fingers to maintain that cleanness? Um, so, like, when you're holding down charge notes, uh, you got to stay relaxed, right? So, like, my fingers are mostly, like, just doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're not actually putting a lot of strength in those other fingers no no think... it, 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 which is why like when uh, you probably notice this with like other players as well like when they play charge notes and they're holding down a note like the key taps become softer yeah yeah, yeah. they do but, but that's, it's because yeah. but with rankers and people like you though they, you don't notice it that's the thing like it sounds just as clean <laughs> um, yeah I uh, I, I've probably reached the point where I don't need to think about it anymore. Like, because I play so much long notes or charge notes. <laughs> Do you ever have a session where you focus on them? Like, I remember last night the the title of your stream was, you know, noodle session. Uh, I used to play a lot of like noodles sessions. Not anymore. Uh, I think that this was like the BMS long note sessions where I played a lot. Yeah, but, but yeah. you never had to do that for 2DX then because you had so much experience in BMS it sort of just carried across, did it? Yeah, like, I mean, 2DX charge notes are easy, man. You gotta face it. <laughs> <laughs> like, compared, compared, compared to, like, O2Gem or BMS, like, 2DX charge notes are simple. <laughs> yeah, I still remember seeing, uh, what was it? Did you ever see the O2Gem number 13 chart? Oh, yeah, I did. Where the ending is like, you don't look for where the charge note is, you look for the gap in the charge notes to know what to hit. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, uh, uh, what do we call them? Like inverse inverse long notes, right? Like where basically like you, you play the gaps in the long notes. <laughs> yeah, when it reaches that point, that's just stupid. <laughs> it, it, it's mostly a, uh, a matter of like getting used to reading it, right? And like, hold, of course, holding down all the notes. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where actually I learned to play 2DX charge notes. Because like, uh, when you have uh, that sort of patterns, right? Like, mm. uh, people call them like inverse long notes, call them curtains, etc. Like, if you tense up, you're going to lose stamina in like 30 seconds. Yeah. And you're, you're going to miss everything as well. So you reckon for a lot of people, it's about just holding, but not in a tense manner, like learning the right amount of force to hold down the note. So yeah, like when I, when I hold charge notes, I, hold, I don't hold them down very hard. So do you reckon people need to focus on sort of coming way, way back to what you're talking about with density and stuff? It's the same thing where it's just knowing the amount of pressure and getting used to it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the exact same thing. Like basically uh, you're doing the same thing, just that you're holding down one or more buttons on that hand. Yeah. And then obviously, and do you reckon that the other notes will just sort of fall in then automatically? Yeah, so like when I'm playing charge notes, I don't actually focus on the charge notes. Like, I don't read them. 
<laughs> God damn it, man. That makes no sense. I still like Thanks. You're reminding me of uh when what's it called? Rejection Girl first came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh I don't really read Rejection Girl, like the, the CN sections. Like I just press and it happens. That, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I've got to pull up I, that I, clip of you just saying, oh, this is so easy. Because you just full combo. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, like, obviously you want to start with something simpler, right? Like, uh, I don't know what even is there to practice in. That's the thing. That there's no, like, intermediate for it. Oh, sorry. I just hit my mic. But it's either you're holding one button or you've got crap like Rejection Girl where it's just mess. Right, there's, yeah. there's no in between step. Like at least with density, you've got like forty steps to get up to that point. But for for two DX, there's no in between. It's literally just you're fucked. I mean, like um, they're slowly trying to bridge that gap. Uh, you have you have charts like uh, yeah, like black and white. Have you seen the chart for black and white? It's a new song. No, uh, I haven't. No, I, there's I like a CN saying. section right at the start, which looks like Rejection Girl, simpler version. Okay. Yeah, and generally, 2DX uh, is making use of more charge notes. So, it, like, you get the simpler charge notes in, like, a lot of songs. That gives you a lot of practice. So, is there any sort of go-to songs you'd recommend to practice them? Oh, there's this random 10 in Copula. Uh, what is it? Like, Alice something something. It's a 10... But the whole song is like, duh, 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 oh, duh, I know the one you're one. talking about. Yeah, that's the one that I played <laughs> when it came back. I couldn't even clear it. <laughs> <laughs> that one's actually pretty good. Like, if you want to practice basic yeah. charge notes. Um, thank you, stuff like uh, Donkey Donk. Oh, fuck Donkey Donk, man. I hate that chart so much. Yeah, Donkey Donk is actually really good practice. Nice. I play it all the time. <laughs> All right, so there's those two as like, you know, uh, ones. Yeah, what about, then what about like you... elevens and stuff? Kailua. Kailua is fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. Kailua. Uh, the thing with Kailua is that it forces you to play relaxed because if you tense up, you're going to mess up the CN plus the roll, right? Especially if you especially if you play on random. Come to think of it now, now that you mentioned that, yeah, like there's a very different feeling to how I hit Donkey Donk and Kailua. Cause you know, with Donkey Donkey, you can still get away with like, you know, man pairing through the charge notes. Yeah. But you can't do that on Kailua. Like there's no way. Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing with Kailua is that like the charge notes are really long. And if you tense up like during the charge note plus the roll, you're going to get like all fast goods. I mean, that's my experience with it. Yeah. What about Golden yeah. Palms Lego? Cause I, I haven't seen the chart ever. <laughs> it's a great chart. <laughs> uh, it's impossible to time but it's really fun so is that another good one to practice or is that like a, a I actually don't think it I, I, I don't think it's good uh, practice if you're just getting to charge notes it's like pretty advanced actually yeah mm. I, I don't want to look at that chart now it's freaking yeah. scary um, another person mentioned acid pumper um, acid pumper gets you used to like holding one button and then you have like a stream on the other on the other buttons. So if you had to choose a recommendation between Kailua or Acid Pumper, which one do you reckon would be better? Acid Pumper, I think. Yeah, so so the go-to yeah. level would probably be Acid Pumper then. Yeah, but Acid Pumper at the same time, it's kind of weird, right? Like, uh, you have like the backspin nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man. The, the backspins. What was it? The, what's the one from Cannonballs that I can't do? Uh, backspin. backspin sweeper, I think. Yeah, that's fucking song, man. <laughs> yeah, not, I mean, like, that's the thing with like recent styles. They've been making use of backspins a lot. Yeah, the other one that comes to mind is Speed Demon. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I think if you really want to get good at charge notes, uh, long note BMS is probably the way to go. Simply because like there isn't enough variety in 2DX at the moment. So it's kind of the same problem that we had back in like. Empress and, and Troopers right. and stuff yeah. where there just exactly. there wasn't yeah. enough variety. And so so do you reckon 2DX is gonna eventually bridge that gap and have enough variety? I mean we are starting to see that, right? Like uh 
uh, like back when, what is it? Cinnabars came out. Then you have stuff like Echidna. Yeah, Snakey. Like that was like, yeah, Snakey Kung Fu. That was like, you had nothing else to practice charge notes on. But nowadays, like, I think there are more, like most charts actually make use of charge notes now. But I'm noticing this sort of, it's not called an asymptote fucking an exponential where it's like you know there's a lot up at this end but at the lower end getting up to that point it's right, still yeah. too much of a jump i reckon like the 10 11s area there's nothing like there's not enough acid pumpers or there's not enough kai lewis to sort of bridge that gap right yeah like i think that's where bms comes in uh it's the same with like density back in Empress or troopers right like when you yeah. go from clearing like double a to Mendes or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and you had nothing in between. Like, right now for charge notes, it's sort of the same. And I think Konami is slowly bridging the gap, but might take a while. Another couple of styles, maybe. One really interesting thing, I, I, I don't know if this exists or not, but is there like a charge note progression table or scale or resource that people can use? I don't actually know. Maybe there is. I haven't had to refer to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, of course you don't have to. But, <laughs> but say a player like me, who's like absolutely dog shit, right? Like, yeah, I, I, I don't think there actually is like what 2 yeah. yeah. I think that'd be something which, you know, you could potentially lend your noodle expertise to. <laughs> mm -hmm, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's you, like... You, uh, could, you could be the, um, the noodle 2.0, like the BPI 2.0 that Taisuke did, you know? That could be your mark on the world. Yeah, it's like uh, we've not we've noticed this trend with two decks, right? Like at first you have density, like you have the huge gap in density, like in troopers to empress, mm. and then uh, in resort anthem onwards, you have like the scratch the scratch gap. Yeah, where you have things like red, and then you're going to B side bunny. Man, yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, and so and like in the past few years, they have actually filled in that gap with a lot of things, which is pretty good. Uh, and I think we'll start seeing that with uh charge notes and back spins as well. Fingers crossed, because yeah, at the moment it's just it's too hard. You just gotta make that jump. Unfortunately, do you? Yeah, just eat noodles for breakfast, lunch, dinner every day. <laughs> Take on the Singaporean lifestyle. <laughs> I mean, charge notes are fun once you can do them. Someone brought up a good point. Is there actually any charts you don't like? Any charts that I don't like? Like uh, charge no charts. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't like Eroica. <laughs> Have you seen the chart for that? I've probably watched it once or twice. I think, is that the one? No, I'm thinking of Emeraldus where it's got like the charge notes and the scratches. That's Emeraldus. I, I don't think I've seen Eroica, but... Yeah, Emeraldus is great. Uh, charge notes, charts that I don't like. It's probably just Eroica. That's that's yeah. one out of like six billion. Jesus, man, really like. Uh, Are there any in X Ten? I don't remember. No, wait. Maybe like one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I thought that X Ten was supposed to take like the hardest of everything and put it all in one chart. No, it, it doesn't have any hard like, charge note sections. Were you gutted when you saw that? You're just like, how could they? It's not testing. Yeah, anything. how could they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like yeah, no. Hard... I saw Mitsuba playing Eroka. That's the one with all the, like, the little charge notes, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's just stupid. It's the same thing with... um Crap, what's that song? Make It Bounce. It's got the same shit. <laughs> the one where you have like the twelfth, like da 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 da. That one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one that I can't read because it's like, okay, there's twenty fourths in here somewhere, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think make it bounce. Like, I don't know. I I full comboed it like the day it came out. So, oh god damn it, was like... easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh well, that was that was a huge blast about the charge notes. Um. Was there anything else that you sort of wanted to touch on with the game? Because I'm, I'm sort of drawing blanks now. I think, you know, we've, we've discussed stuff pretty comprehensively. Was, was there other things you wanted to sort of bring up? Um, what do you actually think of the direction that 2DX is taking? Like, like coming from someone who like, who's taken like pretty long breaks recently. Like you've seen how the game like has changed dramatically like in the past couple of years. 
I, I don't see it because I've been playing constantly. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, interestingly, you mentioned it. Coming to the Cannonballers packs, because, you know, I barely touch Cannonballers. Um, mm-hmm. the, the best way I can describe it is it's okay, but it's not anything. And I still stick to what I said back in the video where I, I sort of feel like it's missing something. So right. Something's sort of been lost along the way. Like, you go along the styles and it still feels good when you play, right? But there's that, there's that something missing, right? I don't know if you've noticed it or not. Um, I feel like it's the most evident in the direction of that the music is taking. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of become like a little more mainstream. Doesn't have that, you know, that 2DX sound. Yeah. Uh, there's not like, a, there's this very R&B, distinct 2DX sound. Yeah. Like, all the R&B and the, the trancey sort of feel isn't there anymore, for sure. Uh, yeah, like, it, over the years, like, there's this thing that I've been saying, like, there's a BPM creep. Like, over the years, the BPM of, the average BPM of songs has, has uh, gone up. I, I know the term for it. There's so many bangers in 2DX now. You know how, you know, for example, Matt will be like, oh man, that's such a banger, right? <laughs> Like, there's bangers, yes, but they're not... There's so many of them now that they're sort of becoming homogenized. They're all starting to feel sort of samey. Yeah. So even though it's a, you know, a sick song, so to speak, right? If you played, what is it, like, Rampage... Uh, what What's the other Usel one? Like, you know how all the Usel oh, ones... Like. Yeah, yeah. All of those sort of Usao songs, yes, they're great songs, but they're all sort of homogenized now. It's sort of like, I, I couldn't tell them apart if you put them in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I think, like, the music direction in general has become a bit more mainstream recently. Like, the mainstream doujin music scene. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. It brings new players in. But uh, at the same time, I do wish that like the newer styles had a bit more of its own character, like in terms of music. Yeah. Do you know a song that I really enjoyed that's very recent? Uh, Winner's Proof, I thought was really good. Oh, yeah. That's that's an amazingly good song, right? Yeah. And do you know why? And this is the really sad part. It reminds me of DJ Max. <laughs> <laughs> like if you've ever played... Oh, what's the song in DJ Max that it's similar to? Um, it, it was from Portable 2. You know the Portable 2 theme? Yeah, yeah. It's basically just the Portable 2 theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, that's like the one thing with recent 2DX styles that I don't completely agree with. Like, I, I'm really happy that they are making use of like charge notes and backspins like to add like variety to the charts. I like that a uh, lot it's just more a- than... Do you remember the copular charting phase where they're like, let's just throw 20 fourths in here because fuck you. You know how yeah, they like, did that? I, I didn't like that. Like, I, li- I like the creative use of charge modes a lot more than, than you know, that shit because it's just like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to put that there. Like, I mean, having played 2DX for so long, like, you notice, like, distinct phases in terms of charting style. Yeah. Yeah, like... uh. Like maybe like resort anthem to Pandua, it's like raw earth power. You like yeah. Put as many notes as you can. A hundred percent, yeah. That like like Copula is really weird where they added like like what you said, a bunch of twenty fourths, thirty seconds to everything. And then what about like cannonballers plus sort of charting? Um I think it cannonballers and rootage, they started making use of a lot of charge notes. A, a lot more backspins, I think. Yeah. So, so for old yeah. school players like me, it's just impossible. But <laughs> yeah, which which is a, which is why, like, when you play stuff like backspin sweeper or remain, it, it just feels so weird to play, right? Because yeah. like it's something that you haven't really focused on much nah, for like the whole of your two years career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remain just destroys me. Like, absolutely destroys me because yeah, those the it's unique patterns, but. Here's the thing, I legitimately really like Remains chart. I think it's a fantastic Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chart. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. So so that charting direction I think is fantastic. Right. But the the issue mm. I was having and coming way, way back was just the, the overcharting of stuff. Like, for example, what was the one like not Tokyo Shinwa, the other one from, from Cannonballs that you were playing the other day, the one that I hard cleared first try. 
Uh, I don't. I forgot what the name is in Japanese. Something, something Simurg. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that yeah. should be like a ten or an eleven. Why the fuck is yeah. it a twelve? That's <laughs> like the one song in two decks where I feel it's overcharted. <laughs> yeah. So, so overcharting, I think, is a a bit of an issue, uh, especially with. I mean, legendaries as well. Like in those cases, I think it's it's fine. Yeah. Because like, you know you, you're making a legendary. It's supposed to be kind of dumb, but. Yeah. Do, do you feel the overcharting in other aspects of the game? Like, do you feel like they're just trying a bit too hard to cram notes in where they don't need to? Uh, I do think that the game is becoming really try hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's overcharting per se, but uh, because there there are like some really hard songs that where the chart actually goes to the music and it's fine, but like. For 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 songs like Simurg, I, I feel like it was way overcharted. Yeah. Like could have been a like a decently hard eleven and you would have been fine. Yeah, it didn't have to be yeah. that freaking ridiculous. Like <laughs> Yeah, let's just make another confessory because why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah. Like uh I do think that the game is becoming really hard, like in the past two styles. Like it's to the point where I can't keep up anymore, like with the really hard stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, like, you, you're a monster of density, so hearing you say you're not keeping up is really surprising. I mean, yeah, you st- stuff like Gangner, Legendary. Uh... Yeah, that thing's stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you see yourself, like, plateauing out on the harder stuff? Like, it's just getting too dense? Mm. I mean, the thing is that I haven't really been working on those songs as well, right? So things like Thor's Hammer, I'm, like, really bad at those stuff. Thor's Hammer, Diavolo. Uh, I mean, if I practice them, I'd probably get better, but I prob- I'll probably i never reach like top ranker level on those songs, at least. Yeah. I, I remember yeah. you and Matt had a zero off. He realized what your weakness was. Remember how you're doing like the, the BMS matches? <laughs> and he just yeah. he hammered you with zero stuff just to be like, yeah, here we go. Because when it comes to raw density, like, you two were on par, but they, yeah, as soon as you found, like, your one weakness, he just kept beating you down constantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, I've been avoiding that weakness for, like, the longest time. Yeah. Yeah. So it really does just come down to what you're focusing on. And I think that's that's one thing that I do still appreciate a lot about the game, is the fact that there is that variety still. Like, yeah. It's, it's not just all Earth power stuff now. There's a lot of Zero, there's a lot of, like scratch or charge note varieties in charts now which i think is a good thing um yeah but i haven't looked at most of the songs past cannonballers like i i don't know if you put a song in front of me i'd probably be like no nah, i've seen it like once oh you're gonna be you're gonna have a rude surprise like when you see stuff in heroic verse oh man i don't, I don't know if i want to <laughs> yeah like songs are getting i mean like like when you see the records that people are getting, like you can't blame them for making like really hard or really weird stuff. Oh, it's it's a natural progression of the game because yeah, if you look at the level of the average player compared to when I was playing to now, yeah, how many of them are clearing twelves? I think I think a good example of it is um the the girl from Okinawa. What's her name? Yuha Mayama, the one that I keep posting videos about. <laughs> like she's actually getting pretty good, right? And she's a relatively yeah. new player, right? So just using yeah. her as a unique example, if that's the standard player, like most people are clearing 12s now. So I feel like the game's sort of trying to cater to that and offer content in that that difficulty bracket. But I think they're yeah. sort of over, over catering in this regard, so... Uh, a little, yeah. I mean, like, now that 2GX is so accessible now... Like, there are so many resources available for it. Like people are improving faster than ever, yeah. which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, but they they do need to pad out like the difficulty curve, like at the extreme top end. <laughs> it's it's just because it, it's like it used to be sort of like that. Now it's like, <laughs> yeah, um, the 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 extreme difficulty is just way too extreme now. And the second thing that I think is demoralizing for a lot of people is. I mean, as amazing as it is seeing the top end, for a lot of people who are, like, really, really gung-ho um, and sort of hit the same walls that you and I hit, you know, in the, the 12 area, it's just too much. Like, you see a huge drop-off once people get to around that level. 
Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that's the thing with like two DX in the past one to two years. Like ever since Lightning came out, like you've seen like world records being shattered like every day. Yeah, uh, and, it, and it's not like it's not by like one point, two points. You get like 10, 20 points increases every day. It can be a bit demoralizing, I think, uh, when you see like the top players are improving faster than you are, even though they are right at the top. But they're, they're pushing crazy hard, though. That's the thing. Yeah. The game's so optimized now that, yeah, seeing those re those changes or those increases, eventually it's got to hit something, right? There's got to be some sort of ceiling that gets hit. Yeah, and like, I feel like people like, people like Yuta and kind of Wello, are, they're still pushing the skill ceiling, right? Every day the ceiling's getting higher and higher. They're building this sky skyscraper right now. The fact that the, the world record for Ellie creation is below a max minus 50 or on max minus 50 just terrifies me. Yeah, like like back in the day, like when Elemental Creation first came out, like the world record was like, what, max minus? Yeah. Like barely max minus. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now, yeah, it's just like... Yeah, I like, I, I mean... Yeah, it's it's like a natural progression for a game for players to get better, for skill ceiling to get better, but uh they are building this skyscraper really quickly. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's just yeah, insurmountable for a lot of people. Like I just feel like it's it's unobtainable now for anyone. Uh I mean it, it, it's doable if you put in the time and effort. It's whether you want to or not. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like, for most people, that, that time commitment is massive, you know? Yeah. I'm actually curious how many sessions you're playing in a week at the moment. Like, how, how often are you going to the arcade? Right now, I go to the arcade maybe three times a week. Three? That's not bad, actually. That's probably optimal amount. Yeah, I mean, that's on top of, like, Infinitas at home. Plus some other sessions at home that I don't stream. <laughs> oh, do you, so you still actually do play at home, like other stuff. Uh, I, I I do play BMS at home sometimes. Wow, jeez. So so yeah. realistically, you're looking at like four or five. Yeah, I'm playing maybe five sessions a week. Oh, yeah. man, it, it explains a lot. Like seeing seeing <laughs> your level, yeah, it makes a lot of sense when you put it in that perspective. Because yeah, yeah, like especially in the past one year, like there's that there, there's this brief period where I was posting scores like almost every day like I, 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 uh, when was it it was like around the time where we ended lockdown I basically had to leave work by 3pm because of like some workplace restrictions like the number of people they could have at work oh, yeah. so I left work at 3 then I'll go to the arcade because I had nothing to do anyway <laughs> 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 then I, I play like 4 or 5 hours at the arcade wow man Jeez. Yeah, and you're fine with your sessions. Like, do you not gas out like I do? Like, are you just fine playing that? Um, I usually start gassing out like after three to four hours at the arcade. Three to four. Okay. Yeah, and and and, and hold my gas out really quickly. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I just it probably just comes from as Jordan was saying. You'd probably climatize to it. Like. It, your body's just yeah. used to playing that. Yeah, part. I'm just used to playing at the arcade. Yeah. So yeah, no problems there at all. Damn, <laughs> makes me jealous though. <laughs> I mean, but that's the thing. Like, so you're just mainly playing 2DX then. You're not really playing anything else at the moment. No, I do play some other games. I play like uh, Drum Mania, Guitar Freaks. I used to play quite a bit of Sound Vortex. I think I got pretty good at it, decently good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I was like, is, is that just yeah. waiting for the cabinet? It's just like, I'll play something else while I wait, or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I most, I, like, when I go to the arcade, like, I want to play 2DX. And then when there's a queue, I'll go play something else. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like, the queues have gotten to the point where I actually play these other games quite a fair bit because I have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you've only got one lightning cab. Is there any prospects yeah. of a second one coming in this? I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, man. Sadly. Because you've got four arcades. Like, surely another one would, like, bite the bullet. But... I mean... 
they're all badly managed, I'll say. <laughs> Sounds like the norm for most arcades. Yeah. So, man, that, that is a disappointment, though. Um, yeah. Someone did actually ask what other games you're playing at the moment, other than, like, rhythm games. What else are you currently playing? Um, other than rhythm games, I play... I've been playing Fantasy Star Online. Uh... As, as you guys have told me, it's the non-shit Genshin. <laughs> <laughs> it's the... Yeah, it's the non-shit Genshin, but it's actually pretty shit right now. Like, there's no content to play. Yeah. Uh, I used to play quite a lot of 14, like, before I started playing with you. Uh, yeah. That was, like, Stormblood. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to coax you back because I'm trying to get back. That being said, I don't know if you saw, but my account's been blocked. Because <laughs> I logged in from, my, from Izzy's computer, so I can't get onto my account anymore. So I've had to submit a ticket for that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, then uh, I play RPGs. I love playing RPGs. Uh, yeah. I'm replaying The Last Remnant for like the 20th time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to pick that up at some point because you've spoken so highly of it. Like it yeah, it's like, uh, so The Last Remnant is this RPG which came out, like, I think on the 360, like, when the 360 first came out. So, like, late 2000s, maybe early 2010s. Mm. Uh, it's a pretty innovative RPG, actually. There's something interesting. I've noticed a lot of rhythm gamers do play RPGs. Yeah, because I'd want to play like an FPS which needs more of my energy. Rhythm games <laughs> takes all my energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as uh well actually thinking of Alex Kim, he plays StarCraft on his time off. So I I don't know how he manages the the anger. His his inner artos is coming out every time he plays that game. <laughs> yeah, I, I do play I, I do play StarCraft too, like casually. I'm not that good at it. Yeah. But it, it's just interesting that yeah, people pick like the chill turn based stuff. As they wind down, as opposed to like you know other full on games. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I used to play StarCraft too, like pretty competitively. I mean, I wasn't that good at it, but like I got to like Diamond, it's which is bad. like right below ma below Masters, I think. That's and I, I, I just, I just gave up because like I couldn't, I couldn't balance like two DX and StarCraft too. It was taking like all my time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, someone there is actually mentioning the saying RPGs these days aren't that chill anymore. I disagree solely because I picked up DQ11 and DQ11's been freaking awesome, man. Like, and, and funnily enough, wisely, I picked it up because I saw it on your recently played list. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I may as well pick it up and try it. Did you actually finish it or did you sort of stop halfway? Uh, I finished it like when it came out on the PS4, I think. Oh, okay. So yeah, you've done a full playthrough yeah. then. Yeah, so like right now I'm just casually playing through like whenever I'm free. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize that it came out on 3DS like years and years and years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh I used to play what? like like there was this Tales game on the 3DS, what was it? I don't Vesperia. remember. Or was it um uh, Vesperia? I think so. Uh yeah, it's like one of them. I I played like five hundred hours of it. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Tales games are scary, man. There's like, here's the thing: there's like surface level tales, and then there's yeah. like deep end tales that you can go into. It's yeah. like the, the end game is so so expansive and such a time sink. Like, oh my god, that's that's gamer hours for sure, man. Holy crap! I think, <laughs> yeah, but I think nowadays, like, you don't do you go that deep on RPGs anymore, or is it sort of like um. Nah, not that deep anymore. Like, I used to 100% most of the RPGs that I played. Oh, dear. Uh, so things like Final Fantasy X, mm. 100% it. Uh, DQ, what is it, 8? The one that was really good. Yeah. I com completed, like, most of the optional content as well. Dear. And that took me, like, yeah, maybe 300 hours. That's so many <laughs> hours, man. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like nowadays it's just too hard to do. Like, once you've done it for a certain number of RPGs, you just sort of, you hit that point, don't you, where you're just like, no, I, I know I can do it, but... It just... I mean, like, it's it's a matter of priorities, right? Like, yeah, now that we're all working and shit, like, we don't have, like, 12 hours a day to play games anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I've noticed that as well, even with, like, my teaching hours. I'm, like, I've got a lot of free time, but... 
even now I'm sort of like, fuck, there's just not enough time. Especially when you're in, in gacha hell like I am, freaking Taisuke. Never <laughs> forgive for Pinecone, swear to God. <laughs> yeah, I think the last the last game that I really 100 percent was Skyrim. Yeah. Oh god, that was yeah. like years and years ago. Jeez. Yeah. Whew. But yeah, I mean, on, on the flip side, though, it would be good if you came back to 14 and finished Shadowbringers, because, dude, you're missing out. It, it was easily the best expansion, though. Eh, uh, I might play, like, right before Animal Walker drops. Yeah, <laughs> good move. Actually, good move. I'll finish off the content with you, because I've, I've got a bunny girl that needs finishing as well. It can, can be bunny bros. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, look, look, we're sitting on about an hour 45 now. Uh, just in terms of recording, I don't want it to go like super duper long because I don't want another one of those Taisuke interviews where it's just Taisuke talking nonstop. But uh, <laughs> was there anything else that you wanted to bring up real quick before we like wrap things up? No, not really. Uh, I'm actually pretty encouraged by it when I see like all these new 2DX players coming in. Yeah. Hope you guys will keep it up. You can take over the old people like me. I can retire soon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, and it is good to see it thriving. Like, I I was worried that the game was plateauing and, and on a decline and dying, but it is nice to see lots of new people coming in. And even on that video where I talked about retirement, there were people like, oh, I've just started, like, in the last three months. But, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I, I, th I think the game has seen a sort of revival in the past two to three years, like, yeah. with data becoming so accessible. <laughs> yeah, and with data and obviously Infinitus not being a complete crock of shit as well, like actually a yeah. playable, yeah. solid version yeah. of the game. And yeah, and obviously the Phoenix Wen becoming such a good controller. Like yeah. all of those things sort of snowball to make the game so much better for like home play. So yeah. Yeah, like 2DX used to be so inaccessible, right? Like yeah. even getting a KOC, like my first controller... I had to jump so jump through so many hoops just to get a US KOC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that also explains why you're a muscle man, because God, that controller was hard to play on. That was like, yeah, like, yeah, it's heavy as so. Yeah, man, explains a lot. Yeah, it's, st it's still sitting somewhere in my drawer there. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've still got my OG one as well, just sitting in my room. Yeah, so, I have like, I have like four KOCs. Oh, God damn, man, that's that's yeah. a that's a commitment right there. <laughs> Whew, all right, well. I guess we'll sort of wrap things up. Thanks for taking the time out to come and chat, by oh, the way. Oh, thanks for having me. It's It's been really chill, actually. Like, it hasn't felt like a, you know, a, a drain at all. It's been really nice to just sit down and chat 2DX. Cause we've, yeah. Yeah. It's... yeah. We, we normally do it, like, across stream chats. But, yeah, it's nice to actually, like, sit face-to-face -face and talk about it. Yeah. It's, yes, it is. So, yeah. Um, if any of you guys aren't actually following Wisely, uh, he's he's got a a Twitch channel where he streams occasionally, sort of sporadically. It's later times for the US, I think, like very early morning US or very, very late times Australian. But um, yeah, he's usually streaming there. Uh, otherwise, you can find him obviously in the international 2DX group. He's still posting scores there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you'll, you'll see his monstrous achievements there as well. Um, and obviously <laughs> his Twitter's been posted on the... Um, on the discussion video, you can see it there at wisely C69, uh, which Izzy actually asked is like, why 69 though? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason though. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's been nice talking to someone about 2DX. Uh, there isn't really anyone to talk about this like, in Singapore. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, you could always talk to Sean. Oh, last passing thing that I wanted to mention was, uh, <laughs> The Wheel of Cool Beans. God, I'm so glad the song is like out of 2DX. <laughs> so yeah, Wesley's got one final story to leave us with uh, before we finish off, which is oh. a bit of history. <laughs> so long ago, or maybe not long ago, maybe five years ago, there's this uh, pretty new 2DX player called Sean. Uh, he got good at the game really quickly. I think he got Kaiden in like a year. And... He had this really weird phrase where, like, if he sort of didn't agree with you, but he just wanted to, like, say something, he'd be like, uh, cool beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sort of, like, sort of stuck, like, with Daniel and I. <laughs> and now we use it all the time, cool beans. <laughs> but the other uh, thing was, like, every time yeah. we warmed up for 2DX as well, 
didn't he always used to play what is it wheel of journey yeah he he played that like all the time and wasn't there something with it while the cabs like where it was super loud yeah you know you know, you know how like view of journey has like this horn that's going out going on like throughout the, the song yeah uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> and it's like it's like especially loud on cab for some reason so like uh like at the arcade i used to go to like you could hear it from outside the arcade <laughs> coupled with the fact that he hits super hard just yeah so like you can't even see the 2dx cab like from the entrance but you can hear view of journey then you think oh shit sean's here <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, last year when uh, we started the stream a bit more, like every time we'd, we'd request a wheel of cool beans from Wisely because it's just such an iconic thing. Just bring back those. It's, cool it's, it's kind of a pity that he stopped playing so quickly. Uh, I think he ended up getting wrist problems. He had to get like a surgery on his hand or something. So he couldn't actually yeah. play 1048 anymore. So he stopped, he swapped to Tucker S and he was still really good. But yeah, as you know, he, he did a Jordan and sort of shifted his focus to fitness instead. And now it's just super buff. <laughs> I I have no idea what he's up to nowadays. I haven't talked to him in like five years. Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately it is what it is. But his legacy will live on forever in Wheel of Journey. In Infinite, <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. So guys, make sure that uh, when you go into a stream, always put in a request for Wheel of Cool Beans. Just like me and Shattered <laughs> Control. You know, I just can't escape it. <laughs> you <just> can't <laughs> escape that shit. But yeah. Um, no, once again, thanks heaps for coming in and thanks to all the no people problem. who tuned in hopefully the, the last two hours have been entertaining for the people who've come in to listen um, as per usual there'll be a VOD up on YouTube uh, which I'll premiere tomorrow afternoon so if anyone missed out on, on our discussion do get them to tune in on that otherwise we might wrap it up there and uh, I'm going to go out and play some DDR while you are uh, probably jammed to some noodle no I'm going to go back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> all right but thanks, guys. Oh, thanks for having me yeah, no it's been problem. a great two hours yeah it's been fantastic alright guys take it easy and uh, hopefully we'll catch you again next week I, I've actually got to figure out what I'm doing for next week in discussion so I'll, I'll figure something out before uh, for then but yeah take it easy guys and we'll, we'll catch you on the next one